I'd like to introduce our panelists. Uh, on the far end is Ajahn uh, Pramaha Prasert uh, from the Thai Temple near uh, Fremont, California, near my home. And this is the, the Venerable Temple Tuku. Uh, uh, I guess you live in San, Santa Barbara now. Right. Santa Barbara. But mm -hmm. we see each other quite often when it comes to Berkeley. And I'm, I'm Ron Nakasone. I'm a uh, I'm a, uh, what should I say, uh, I teach over at the Graduate Theological Union. I'm trying to retire, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, uh, what, uh, when uh, I was approached uh, uh, this time by Marita, Marita's over there, it's always getting into trouble, <laughs> uh, that we needed, uh, a, if I would organize a panel or say something on, on Buddhism, and I thought, well, you know, I've done so many of these things, and you know, I've written uh, many articles, so you know, people have access to those things. So I thought it'd be better if we get some real life uh, uh, Buddhist monks here. Uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a priest, not a monk. It's a lot of different. Uh, so we have uh, today we have three different traditions here. Uh, my tradition is uh, Japanese Pure Land tradition. It's the it's what we call a devotional school, and uh, it's the largest denomination in uh, Japan, and and it's also probably the largest Buddhist, Japanese Buddhist denomination here in the United States. So we have sixty some odd temples throughout the United States, and uh, so anyway, that is the context and. Uh, I'll have each of our panelists uh, speak on, <coughs> on their own traditions or, uh, by themselves. So this is the first slide here. Uh, these are the, we are the three panelists here. I'm on the top. Uh, this is the uh, Venerable Temple Tuku Rinpoche and the Venerable <coughs> Ajahn Pramaha Prasir. As I mentioned, uh, I teach Buddhism at the Graduate Theological <laughs> Union that we are from. Yeah. Uh, Still paying. And uh, this is the interior of the library, and I just wanted to show you. And I recently had an exhibit of my calligraphy pieces, so the uh, so the pieces in the in the back there are my are my work. Wow. And uh, this is the uh, venerable Temple Tuku Rinpoche, mm -hmm. and this is his address and contact number. And I want him to say something about himself. So, Temple um, uh, 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 Tuku has a very colorful history. Colorful history, so I, uh, I'll have him explain uh, about uh, something. But why don't you just tell us something about yourself? Well, just now? St you're starting with this slide here. <laughs> <laughs> One minute? Uh, well, One I second? Have, I have several slides. So. Okay. <laughs> this is uh, our first. Uh, six years old, 1960s. Uh, it, we call uh, Young Lama's Home School in Delhi, in India, after we exile in India. And I was the uh, second, uh, how you say, from the left? Second the from front. the left, yes. Second in the left, front row, in the yes. front row. Oh, yeah, tiny. second tiny, yes, I'm a six years old. And uh, we, in Tibetan, we have, uh, there's uh, four major schools. A Buddhist school called Yingmapa School, Kaikyu School, and Saikya School, Gilupa School. So all these lamas are all together, together and uh, from the little child together. And that is the, the monastery where I belong. It's called a Ganden Monastery. I was, you know, born in Tibet 1954 and uh, 57 uh, I was in that monastery. And until 59, when the communist Chinese invade our country, so we lost our monastery. That was uh, destroyed when the Chinese uh, Cultural Revolution came and then destroyed all the monasteries. That time, there's like 5,000 monks. So mm -hmm. I escaped from there when I was three years old. Yeah. Then you came to America? I came to, uh, <laughs> mm, yes. I came to America um, 19, uh, first one is I came in 1979, and uh, then that was uh, uh, maybe, maybe you might have a story later. This is the, 
I was 1983, uh, I was in El Cerrito, very near to Reverend lives in GDU to Berkeley. I grown up almost like 1983 to until 19, uh, until like uh, five years before I was lived there. And uh, I used to work at the Starbucks in the El Cerrito, barista, as a barista. I worked there for part time there for eight years. Yes, that's, uh, that's uh, my life. This is His Holiness Dalai Lama. Just, uh, I was very fortunate to get a blessing from His Holiness. It was, uh, actually, uh, I came first time to Washington, D.C. was 1979, because when I was in India, I worked with Tibetan Library and Archives. And we have a joint project with the Smithsonian. And I came to Washington, D.C. to part of the cultural advisor for Smithsonian and the Tibetan Library. We did the uh, Smithsonian and uh, Tibetan Library Archive of Hisun Dalai Lama. We did a joint project since 1975 to 80, and I did a all complete part of the project. And this is the last year at uh, his office. I was, I'm, I was actually not ready to see him, so I don't have any formal dress, or I was uh, not thinking there's no way I can see the his office. So I was just like, with the public, and then his office came up, and he just see me and come here. Then he came, that so was, that's what will happen. Some people, my friends, say, "Why you don't have any scarf or nothing?" <laughs> <laughs> now here the, at the GD, GDU here with the Reverend, we did uh, some exhibition about Tibetan Buddhist uh, artifact, uh, tankers and uh, all. And uh, this is one of the Tibetan minister. On the same time, he came to Berkeley, so we all joined here. Some lamas, monks, those lamas from Drepung Loseling. And they came to, they do tour to all over India to do some sand mandalas and rituals. And we were lucky, at the same time we have exhibition at the GTU, the Lama's Water at the Berkeley, so we invited and they were so happy to join with us. And we are lucky too. So um, now I'll ask the Ajahn Pramaha Prasar to say a few words and introduce himself to us. So this is, uh, his temple. Good afternoon. Um, <coughs> they have many names. The people call me uh, many names uh, <laughs> as the Thai tradition. When they see me getting old, they call me Long Ta, like a grandfather. When the kids <laughs> may call like that, or grandpa, or something like that. And then the, uh, my name is uh, my personal person as the born, and then but now my title what is given by the king of Thailand. I, I was given uh, the, this the second second time from the king of Thailand last year, and 13 years before. So the, the, the present one, means the last year it was Hora Thamma Vite. Hardly to remember. Hora Thamma Vite means the name has to be changed. Not just sir in front, something like that. I am among uh, 500, 500 topmost of the Thai monks in Thailand, all over the world. I would say that I have to big mouth. <laughs> uh, so I was born in very small village, in very, from the poor area, the poorest area of Thailand, uh, northeastern Thailand. You, some of you may experience about that. But his daughter used to go to my village when she. Uh, was teacher there, so I took her to see my village, and then the, I just went to a school. The during my, the my time, I think like like a fifty eight, uh, for sixty years ago, I think more than fifty years ago that just the fourth grade, the primary school, and then I finished, and then. At age 11, I came to the temple and trained as a novice monk since that, since that time. And then I just continued my education as a monk and something else. And then I moved to Bangkok. I mean, I stay maybe just one, uh, one temple, different temples, not more than three years uh, each temple, because I moved around. Because, uh, the reason just uh, try to get the best education. So 
ไอวอลินลักไอวอชวอลินลักกีแกรม have a chance to go to very good temples in different part of Thailand and then uh, about 50 years ago I moved to Bangkok stay in Bangkok and then after that uh, I study in Bangkok and moved to India for four years study in India but I study Pali the Pali language at Narada Pali City and then another something else at Makat University and then I came I came back to Thailand in 1976, I believe, because I went to India the, the first year, 1972, and then 76 I came back to Thailand, and 78 I have a chance to go to visit Japan, uh, some of those countries around there, and then 1982 I was invited to come to America as visitor by a group of friends who would like to support refugees because I am very expert in one thing is the Lao language, Lao Chien language, because I born next to, to the border of Laos. I, I speak that, uh, that my, my, my language. And then but when I went to uh, American consulate in Bangkok, and then they said, no, you cannot go, just six months. You have to get a green card surprised me. And then they just give me a piece of the paper. I go, they give this to the, the temple in America to sign for you, like an affidavit, something like that, financial, something like that. And then there's just that, add to that. And then uh, six months after that, I got a green card. And mm -hmm. since 1982, I have been in Berkeley, in Chicago, in Houston, and 83. A group of the people in Bay Area want to start the temple, but most of the, them, the professionals, engineers, like you know that, that area, Silicon Valley, so they want to start the temple. So I was invited to join them, and then I have been stayed there for a long time. So this, uh, I think the professor took this picture, when they didn't know, but uh, our temple really lucky to honor, to have the queen of Thailand to visit and lay the foundation uh, stone for the main temple that you, you saw the first picture. And then uh, although also the princess, uh, at least two, three princesses, stop by at our temple quite often. <laughs> so because of that, we are quite, quite, quite lucky. So that's my, uh, this temple. So if you look at the uh, fun, uh, that is the symbol of the Queen of Thailand. And then, so, and, I have been, I just stay mostly the Thai, uh, mo, uh, at my temple mostly are Thai. And then the young people, when they retire, they go back to Thailand. <laughs> and then the kids when grow up, they when so, go somewhere else to work, right? Uh, so it's just young people because most, mostly the working people, means the engineers in that area. Like uh, at my temple, I think I would say that the, about 60% of the men of male who go to the temple, who are the directors of the temple, so are engineers. <laughs> and then there are many female engineers at my temple. Mm -hmm. yes. So, this so, is a, some photos my daughter gave me. Oh, this oh they, they, uh, this, uh, yeah. I think this one would be... This is your temple in Isan. Uh, yes, sir. This is the temple in Isan that uh, when I think when we have the big ceremony, the people love to dress in white and observe the eight precepts, like a temporary nuns, something like that, for a week to practice, take it serious, uh, to, where is this? Like a, so that's uh, Amy at the end. That's my daughter at the end. <laughs> oh, I see. That's Amy, okay. Sorry. Okay, so... So we should, uh, so today I thought what we would do, uh, this is the outline of our presentation. I thought we would uh, talk a, a little bit about what it means to grow old in America, uh, in, in, Asian, uh, in Asian culture. So this is uh, the sequence of what we like to uh, speak about uh, uh, to, uh, this afternoon. So, um, 
Uh, I'll begin by saying that uh, in America, um, I'm sorry, in America, of course, this is a very youth-oriented uh, society, so we don't, uh, society as a whole, we don't spend too much time uh, caring for the elders. Uh, but in, in Japan and in East Asia, oh, I should mention that uh, three of us represent three different uh, traditions of Buddhism, East Asia, Japan, uh, Depotulku would represent what we call North Asia, the Trans Himalayas, and uh, Mahaprasert uh, represents uh, Southeast Asia. So these are three different uh, Buddhist uh, traditions. And uh, it's kind of rare that they actually get together like this. Uh, we, we all have our own things. It's like Christians, you know, I know the Catholics and the Protestants don't get, get along too well. <laughs> But anyway, uh, I'd like to begin uh, by, by, by quoting a, a passage from uh, the Analects by Confucius. And this is chapter four, uh, chapter two, book four. And this is, uh, Confucius uh, writes this uh, uh, he, at, uh, at, at 70, he's looking back at his life, you know, what have I done? And it's a kind of life review. And, he's, and this is what he writes. He said, at 15, I set my heart to learning. At 30, I took my stand. At 40, I was without doubt. At 50, I understood the way of heaven. And at 60, my ear was attuned to heaven's ways. And at 70, I followed my heart's desires without transgressing the way of heaven. So. Uh, this is, in a sense, this is Confucius's autobiography, the, the shortest autobiography probably in the world. Uh, but uh, the striking thing about uh, this passage is that uh, it's uh, emphasis on education. Remember, at 15, he says, "I'm going to be studying this, whatever it was." And uh, and if you do it for a while, uh, he says, "Well." At 30, I, I made the right choice, essentially. I made the right choice. Uh, I'm going to study geriatrics or whatever. <laughs> I'm going to be an engineer. So I, I, I made the right choice. And at, and at uh, I'm sorry, that was at 40, not 30. At 30, there's still quite a bit of doubt, I guess. But anyway, uh, he, the, the, this actually becomes a kind of a template uh, for growing old in Asian cultures at least those cultures that were impacted by Chinese civilization. And the emphasis here, of course, is self-cultivation, self-realization, and self-transformation. And this, is, this model is still, uh, revered is not a good word, but this, is, this, uh, this, uh, um, this pattern or this model is still what the, uh, uh, determines or uh, guides uh, many of uh, growing old in Asia. So we look forward to growing old, and I, I'll tell you one story. I've had said this before. Uh, when I went to Japan uh, to study in 1969 or something like that, a few years ago, I was speaking to my calligraphy instructor, and he was about 55 or so, maybe 60, I'm not sure, and I was a rash young student from America, you know, we're smart here. And, and we were talking, and he says to me, you know, I look forward to growing old. And I, I was kind of dumbfounded, you know, why, why do you want to get old for? And I asked him why, you know, really, not too, not too bright, but I asked him why. And he said, well, I want to see how I will grow and how my art will change. And so that is a kind of pattern that, you know, I follow myself, and not only myself, but this is the kind of pattern uh, that we, we have of the elders. The elders have a responsibility uh, to grow old uh, and to mentor. And this is a very a teaching moment, uh, a mentoring uh, moment. So uh, with that, I just want to ask uh, Tepol Tuku, can you say something about growing old in, in Tibet and what, what kind of images that you have of 
growing old in your, your culture? Uh, culture growing old is a very dignity, very respect. And, uh, and so it's very respectful. People take his uh, elder senior, senior is one of the, yeah. It starts from the kids, actually. We, in Tibetan Buddhist culture is, uh, we believe impermanent. And also we believe rebirth. And so, so age older, I mean, basically start from the, even your young age, who is elders, elders, as we respect the host, uh, even dead people, whoever born, but whoever the first born was more elder than you, it all depending, dependable upon. So, so it's a very uh, responsibility for all those for people who have a culturally respect for it, very respectful. And also for them, elder, like the uh, Reverend just mentioned, Many uh, elders, they became about age 50, it's about, they were very proud of the be uh, uh, getting older and they're waiting for a bit more. But some elders even, they like to tell the extra age, even they're 60, they like to say 75. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a very unique, they're so proud of you all, and must be healthy. That's the most important thing, you have to be healthy, mental healthy and uh, uh, physically healthy it's very important so that's what the younger generation family is always family oriented that's make sure they're taking care of well that's uh, so very unique together uh, Ajahn Mahapasar, do you have something to say about uh, elders in thailand so i think in thailand i think that be in delawada buddhism uh, quite easy to understand about the old age because we uh, we have been taught about the part of the nature. So like a Thai, in Thai tradition, Thai belief, we, we divided uh, our age into three parts. Like the story of Songkran or the New Year. So it says that the first 25 years the first 25 years that our theory or we should concentrate on our face. Face here means to how to be prepared to move on by be tr trust yourself to move on. And then after 25 to 50, that is the time, the tough time for life. The tough time for life means our heart always warm beat up, we have to work hard to build up ourselves. And then after 50 means the time we have to clean up everything. It says that we should clean up our feet to go to bed. Means be, be ready to move on uh, to the uh, next part of life. Means next life. It's something like that. And then when we talk about the, about the old age, uh, Thai people do not care that much. Do not care means this is the part of the nature. But one thing, when we're getting old, the, you are respected by your members of the, your family. You are the members of your family listening to you. And then if you involve with the, uh, the community, the community listen to you. Like you are someone that who experience, bring your experience to give, to teach the younger generation to be the example to them. And then when to the end of life, like a in Thai society, just accept that it's part of life. Nothing to attach. Because we have been taught since we were born, the body is just an apartment to rent just a how to live for a while. And then after that, we will live with everything. If always we have been taught that if you are not you. You are the drop of the blood of two blood, two drop of the blood of your parents. And then you survive by the nature. After that you have to return to the nature. So about the death is very common in the Thai sense. But to getting old, that is very important that you have to really like what the professor Nakasone just said about, and then 
thinking about the heaven where we are going to go. Clean up your feet. Be ready to go. Kaput, you have anything else to say? Mm, yeah. Then uh, also, Tibetan culturally, the, the reason why they have so much respect for the elders, because we believe like the Heaven says we believe the elders have the most experience of the life. And also the reason why they take that value, because from, in general, it Tibetan, from little kids, they trained, it's not in the method of a monastery, but trained by the spirituality. Spirituality is a very inseparable with the family life. So that's the reason they have some people who are getting older, they already have a mentally prepared the experience of the spirituality and understanding of the the life of the uh, some positive lives. So they have a, so much value can share. That's the reason why we respect for the elders and we all the elders have so much responsibility uh, reach to the youngest to together. That is the most important role for the elders. The first family, for the oldest one, is the man who hold family to unity together, and that reach to the other village community and all. So that is so very important. Our our kids, elders, will be most respectful and uh, responsibility for their roles. Now in Japan, uh, we have and in China, we have many ceremonies that uh, we honor elders. So for example, 60 is very important for an elder, the Japanese elder or Chinese elder, because uh, we believe that it be, we complete one life cycle. And at 60, at 60, we begin a second life cycle. So we have a big party, uh, a big party to celebrate this uh, event. In the past, of course, uh, life 60 was a very long life and most people expected to live only till 50 and but now with public health and better medicines and nutrition we live longer but still 60 is an important event and so we have a big party and we honor our parents in that way and this is really a kind of a teaching tool for the uh, younger generation because our children or grandchildren watch how their parents uh, treat their own parents and this this is how we transmit uh, we transmit the uh, importance of honoring elders do you have any kind of ceremony or ritual in your country that uh, in Tibetan culture we don't have any uh, ceremony no cake for the elders no cake for the elders <laughs> <laughs> not, not only the elders, we don't have a birthday cake. We generally, now we in America, we, we do that. But uh, generally Tibetan birthday is always New Year. New Year is your birthday. Everybody celebrate New Year. New Year is your birthday. Yeah. And also Tibetan age is a little bit one, one year before it go extra before. Like for example, like if I am, one year, I mean, we come from the child was uh, in a uh, womb, when pregnant, then they come from that day. So when child born, you already one year's holiday, well, anyhow. So, <laughs> so we don't have the celebration of this, but uh, but at the same time, we do have uh, any moment of the new year, the most, uh, we the family who celebrate is the, the senior the, the grandpa or father, uh, mother, grandma, that's the most uh, way to the ceremony. They give the, res the most respect to the parents. So that's what the New Year is good for the parents because they got a very well treat and well respect and good for the kids because they got a new dress and <laughs> they get some pocket money, happy. <laughs> so happy, happy year is the New Year is the happy for the, everyone. <laughs> So, I, as my experience, I think uh, one, by the tradition, number two, I think by what is the rule, the law of the country, the, the government, 60 is very important for the Thai people. 
because the retirement government or the government officials retire at 60, <laughs> except judge. Judge is uh, 70, judge. But the rest, you have to retire at 60. Maybe just share the, the job to another, <laughs> to other people. I don't know, but I think that is uh, uh, until now. And then 60, I just came back. I just came from the restaurant on North, on, on Hollywood Boulevard with him, uh, the, a friend of the Thai Temple in Los Angeles, just over 60 years old. So I think that it's very important for the people to look back. Also, the, um, the one who gave a short Dhamma talk, I just uh, remind him to look back the past 60 years since the war, he could remember what he, he what about his life and look forward what the purpose of being here and then look back before he could remember means about his parents as the Thai tradition. When we celebrate our birthday, I remind him that means we are show our gratefulness to our parents, not to, our, not to ourselves. If without the parents, we cannot be here, we cannot have been here. So when we do anything good, give to the parents. So that is. And then for the future, please remind yourself from the past 60 years, so that is, uh, he tried hard to be happy, to be successful, but main purpose is to be happy. And then how he make him happy from now to until the end of life. I remind him like that. And then I explain about how you to calm mind, happy mind, peaceful mind, would support the body. So that is. Do you want to say something more, Peter? Uh, yeah, and also in uh, Tibetan culturally, we do very, take it very important for physically and mentally. We make the balance, balance meant they train, I mean, for the physically, the we ages, we cannot be go behind. We have to be taken care, but at the same time, your heart has to be young. And if you, that to be a heart has to be young, you have to be open mind. More you open mind, no matter you're getting how much you're older, but your heart will be young and you will be more healthy and your uh, that memory, everything get uh, stability and it's very important. So it's so, preparation is not from the, just from city, it is all continuing, uh, continuing from the, your, and starting from the impermanent and uh, and also compassion and, uh, and love. These three are combined all our uh, daily life. That's it. Thank you. Okay, so, you know, here in America, of course, uh, this culture in America is quite different. Uh, different from Japan or China or Tibet and uh, Thailand. And we know we have trouble with the young people. You know, they never listen to their parents. They forget the good old ways, <laughs> and you know, in, in the, the Japanese community, of course, has been, my family has been in America uh, for over 100 years, uh, and we've seen, of course, the evolution from the nostalgia, you know, still when I was growing up, there was a nostalgia from our parents and grandparents that we need to remember the old ways, we need to honor our parents, and you know, we, we, were grow, we grew up that way. But here in America now, with all this internet, you know, computer, uh, we get confused. The children are confused, and, uh, and we, you know, they, they don't go to temple. <laughs> they go to temple, um, and they have all these strange ideas about America. <laughs> like we don't, have to, we don't have to honor our parents, we can do whatever we want. You know, ego is very strong, the family is no longer the focus. And so how is it, in, in, uh, the, the Tibetan community is relatively young, and so is the Thai community in America. So how is it in your community? How, is the, how are the young people, do they listen to you? Do they listen to their parents? Do they remember the past or the good the honoring? Of yeah, it is 
we really need a balance. <laughs> we really need a culture balance. It's very important. Yes, America mm, culture has a, this new generation system. There's a lot of things we can adapt it to, but all of there are a lot of uh, very danger. So uh, it's very, we found it's very uh, uh, important to be balanced because the kids grown up here, not in Tibet, not in India, not in uh, our whole community. It grown in a different culture with a different, uh, it the melted culture was uh, melted. So we adapting with a different culture, but same time we try to uh, focus on the value, the value of the kids uh, to make sure not go beyond the, the value we we stay in that. It's not easy, like a reference says, it's very, <laughs> very difficult. But uh, one thing is I found myself is, like a reference says, now there are many young, young kids, not really, they, they really doesn't believe and doesn't mean. They have respect, they've grown up with, it depends on how you've grown up with the family. Some families still very unique, uh, working well together, some family, they're out of control. The kids become too extreme. And kids think parents, uh, they don't speak English, so they think they're not, they're not important. They think kids think they're very important because they speak English well, that's so that kind of thing. But uh, generally, I found myself now is, uh, I myself, I was a monk. I was like a, like a lama, you know, like I used to live in a monastery. And, uh, uh, be. Now I'm not monk, I'm ex-monk, no, former monk. I'm, I'm, but I can do more, uh, contribute for the younger generation to be a bridge becoming more uh, together. That's what the way uh, I learned from the, uh, in our community. Because uh, when the lamas come, the monks, kids, their kids are too, it became a little bit formal. So that the kids doesn't really go to the temple, they don't go to church. They, they just have a very limited time to go there, and then that's what they also, when the kids, they see the lamas, they fully respect, but they never get communicated. So like me, as a normal person, at the same time, I do have some experience of the, my uh, lama experience, so I can reach kids, I can connect with the lamas, so I can, I can do a little bit of it to uh, uh, kind of like a bridge. And that right now is kind of helpful right now. Yeah. Thank you. Ajahn. So when we, I just would like to go to the, back to Thailand, about the structure of the family in Thailand, it's quite easy to teach the kids. Because we live like a three generations together. Parents, grandparents, and parents, and the kids in the big family. For now, it's maybe a smaller family average like a, maybe six, seven, something like that, all together. The grandparents, parents, two kids or three kids become now, become Americanized, smaller, but we still stay together in the, uh, in the same family. That very quite easy because the grandparents teach the parents the parents be a good example how to treat, how to take care of your own parents, I mean their grandparents. The kids would keep their eyes on that. You learn from that. And then also we talk about the karma. What we, what we have done to the elders, to the elders, so we are going to get back. Like if my, for, for example, I am the parents of the young kids. If I treat my mom bad, my, my parents bad, and then my kid will do that to me too. We believe in that. Mm -hmm. So both uh, grandparents and parents have to be careful to be the good example for the young generation. That is structure in Thailand. And then, but now I think just parents and the kids because like I just said, or oh, you may learn that uh, the first wave, the big wave of Thai people came to America during the Vietnam War, I mean 60s, right? Married to Americans. And then after that, the professionals, the stu students who came to study here and start to work here. And then 
very few come for the business because of that. So the who marry to American uh, Americans, they may die here because their family is here. Only if you go back to Thailand. But the students who settle down here, who work here, have the kids, have the family here, and have the kids here. After they retire, I think about 80% up, they go went back to Thailand, to their home country. Because they still need what they experience, they when they have the same feeling, same environment means friends, the family, the home, as the Thai, as Thai tradition, they, they just need that. And then they just leave the kids here. So, but we always remind the kids about the parents, like what I said at the beginning. Without your parents, you cannot be here. The word of the goodness of being grateful to the parents, that is very important. We always, that the, the heart, the important teaching, we offer to the kids. But one thing, the gen very few gentlemen, some gentlemen here, I see that, I think I experienced about eight years. I have an American who became a novice for a year because already he graduated from uh, college. He became a monk for eight years, Michael. Michael. Life for the three month day, three month boy. So he very good monk. He was a very good monk. He was a good example to the kids. And then I tried to teach the kids. The kids hardly understand Thai, right? I have to use my broken English. <laughs> so the, the kids hardly to listen to me too. So, but when Michael spoke up, Everyone listen. So now I just would like to share my idea that I need American monks at my table. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you very much. So uh, I'd like to uh, change our topic a little bit and you know, how do we care for our elders? Mm -hmm. my, when my, uh, as I mentioned, my family has been in America for over 100 years. So when my grandparents passed away, my grandfather passed away at home. My grandmother was ill and was taken to the hospital just a few days before she passed away. And uh, I'm sure my parents had hoped that they would die at home too, and that their children would be around them. Mm -hmm. I'm the oldest. Uh, but you know, we all left. We all left Hawaii because uh, no, no job. My sister is in Wisconsin, my brother was in, uh, I guess, in Saipan and Rota. I was here. We had one brother, uh, we had, I had one brother in, uh, in Hawaii. But, uh, so I, it must have been very lonesome for them to pass away in a nursing home, in a hospital. Uh, for uh, myself and Irene, uh, we have no illusions about American <laughs> America. So we actually bought long-term care insurance, mm -hmm. and um, hopefully we'll never have to use that. Amen. And I, you know, I was hesitating whether we should buy it or not because it's expensive, but uh, uh, this good friend of mine, uh, he was, I think he's Methodist, uh, Lloyd Wake said, well, Ron, I'm going to buy this. If I can't use it, somebody else will, or somebody else can. I thought, you know, I, we have to have that kind of attitude that this is Insurance is a thing that we all share the risk. So anyway, so uh, uh, so this is the kind of reality the, the Japanese community faces. Uh, I'm not the only one. So uh, the, the Thai and Tibetan community are relatively recent, you know, 1975. Uh, this uh, Tibetan is a little earlier, 1959. Right. But anyway, that they started coming in mass numbers to America. So what, what is the situation in your community about caring for older people? Yeah, that's uh, similar to exactly what everyone says. We, culture is very important. The Tibetan community, uh, we are growing here now in California. So we have a number of the quite senior 
uh, peoples here. And uh, like Reverend says, senior people really, uh, no one doesn't want to go to the caretaker. They like to be in home. They, they want to be stay with the home and they want to be care in the home. And also some environmentally, they want to be at peace. But that's what um, basically. And uh, our community right now, we don't have any ready to help them to be to give a special kind of like a retirement. We were thinking about to have a, their own retirement place to build at, at the, near the community center. They can have a temple and the uh, elders we can be retired nearby. And uh, that is our vision and the dream. Right now, we don't have that. But, uh, but at the moment, we Tibetan communities are living very close to each other. And it, it helps mentally, it helps, uh, uh, it helps uh, a lot of the togetherness. And it, so the parents, grandparents who are really, but still, now we are living in a different country, not in Tibet, in America. So it means kids have to go to work, parents have to go to work, and the elders have to stay in a home, stay in an apartment or a home by themselves. Still, even they stay home means not like in India or Tibet. In India, you, you live uh, even there, there's a neighbor. You can be talked to like a 20 neighbors or parents would be together, talk and share. But like here, everybody live in their own home and maybe once in a while you can meet the neighbors. Mostly you know, all the kids, their parents go to work and the uh, grandparents stay at home. And that's uh, still. But then another one is good part of Tibetan is we, our culture is a very involved with the spiritual and rituals and prayers. So parents are not really stay lonely in the, also they don't watch much TV. They don't much because they don't understand much. But they, <laughs> but they are very busy with the ritual. They're so proud of them. When they come to, oh, and this month I did the 100,000 mantras, this month and I did the prostrations. So this is a very good for them. Now we. We make a prostration that's uh, wrong. It's very good because uh, no, number one, it is one of the uh, there for practice for the practice book called body, mind, speech. They do the mantra. They do uh, motivation. Same time, they physically they put a lot of energy. But uh, in the general sense, it is very best exercise. We don't need to go to gym. <laughs> this is a free gym. <laughs> we don't call gym, but it's like a gym, <laughs> sweating and, yeah. and the, so. It's kind of, this kind of thing is helpful to our seniors to, mm -hmm. uh, it's, that's up. I just listened to him. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot why I'm going to do to you what the, your, uh, your question is. Oh, uh, we, now in America, of course, uh, yes. with the aging uh, is different from Japan or Thailand. Uh, uh, my, my grandparents, of course, uh, died at home. My parents died at a hospital, and I understand that I would probably have to go to a nursing home sometime. This is the reality. So uh, uh, we don't really like it, but this is maybe the best. So any, the, the how we care for elders has changed in Amer because li we live in America now. So I think it's for myself, I think. I, what, what I did from that, what I give the advice to the people. Because the, this generation of Thai people still confused why they are going to live when they're getting old and older. Because they respect the right of the kids. And then, but they still miss something and what they have born with, means the Thai culture. They want the kids to stay with them, right? So I always remind them that, one, just think about what you want between one or two. One, the warmth from your heart, in your heart. Means if in the Thailand, like what the Reverend just talked about, means we surround with the family and friends. And then, especially in my village, if someone gets sick, the kids work at the paddy field. Uh, and the people who are free just take turn to take care of everything at the, at the house, in the house. Something like that. The kids don't worry, should not worry about the, the, those sick person, the elders who are at home. Some. So, but here I remind them: if you need a warmth, 
that we in Thailand try to go back to Thailand. You have to leave the kids here. Number two, if you think about the physical part, here is the best medicine, best doctor, best nurse, everything best for the physical part. Give the body to them. But you have to take care of your own heart. Mm -hmm. I always remind them like that. And, but also the monks will, will take very important part. Now at my temple, there are two ladies who is 103, one who just celebrated uh, 100 years on July the 4th. So to, to, we, we always frequently we visit these two people, these the monks. They're dead, but they still live at home. One, the one who 103, no any kids left, only the, the gone. The kids, husband, died, all died. Just grandkids, she lived with the grandkids nearby the temple. And one, just two, two daughters live whom not marry, still with her in the Black Hawk in the high in area of that area. So they live there together. We visit them very quite often. So I always remind them about the, uh, how to, what is the, believe in themselves, make warm about, in their heart, build up by themselves. And then just like the lady who are 100 years old, she always meditate. She take the eight precepts, like the, then the Chambori nun means not, do, do not eat from noon to next morning. Just do something like that. She had big lunch. And then she chant, she meditate. And then another, the 103, that she always love to watch TV. But she, she will watch her more than her. She watched you, yeah, right? She said do something like this. And then lately she does not come to the temple because she said, oh, she, she do not want to disturb all the people. When she, she's still healthy, still healthy. So both of them were healthy. But that, the 100 years old, every, when the Buddhist uh, holidays, like uh, on the 25th, she will be at the temple for three days. The, because full moon, full moon of next full moon will be on the seventh. She will come to the temple from Sunday, something, and then uh, meditate, do chanting with the monks, with the group of the people who are interested, something like that. She still very, very good, in very good shape. So I think that is for myself. When we live here, we have to take care of ourselves, take care of our own heart. But the base. The doctors, the nurse, equipment, the medicine is made from here. I, I don't see any med, uh, equipment made in Thailand. <laughs> Mostly from America, from Europe, right? The the most expert uh, doctors came to America to study at Stanford, at UC, uh, SAF, something like that. And so I, that is my thank you. Thank you. So uh, in, in, a, in the Japanese community, uh, uh, very distrustful of uh, American uh, medical system. Uh, we don't trust American authorities too much because in World War II, of course, the Japanese community, 100,000 or so, were uprooted from their homes and taken inland and they <laughs> lost all of their uh, property. My, my father lost his farm in Hawaii. So we're very distrustful of the American government. And we, we, we're not quite sure what to do with, uh, with American system. So, so how, um, how uh, do you want, you know, one of the things that I don't like about the American medical system is that I don't like the food. You know, the food is, the food. And you know, they serve us uh, potatoes and meat, which is okay once in a while, but you know, we grew up eating tofu and Japanese food, and we miss that taste. And they don't give us chopsticks; they give us fork. And uh, so that's one one concrete uh, problem. But and also, 
in, in Japan and China, you know, we always address people by their last name, never their first name. Mm -hmm. Even now, when they, people call me by their first name, especially younger people, I feel, uh, I feel kind of offended. I mean, I shouldn't be, but because I've been here, I was born and raised here, but you know, I, I feel kind of offended that they call me by my first name. Mm -hmm. so informality is, uh, uh, is okay, this is America, but still, you know, I, I feel somehow that you know, I'm getting on in years, you know, and my hair is getting gray, that they should offer a little bit more respect. Uh, but uh, how, if you went to a physician's office, for example, and they called you, uh, how do you want the nurse to call you? They says, okay, Teppo, come inside, so, is that okay, or, how, you know, how, how would you want, how would you want a, a, a nurse or a, a nurse or caregiver taking care of you? How, how would they want you to, yeah, the, you want them the to call address it, The calling name, I don't care, because they never could be correct name call. <laughs> I was called people Teppo, Heppo, Tipo, <laughs> So I accept whatever they call. I know that's not uh, at the motivation. I don't think this personally attacking. Yes, so yes, so uh, it's just okay, that's fine. But, but, but uh, yes, like Tibetans have a little uncomfortable to to Western treatments. It's not because of the unrespect, uh, because of, uh, on the other hand, Western uh, medicine, Western uh, physics, all are very well trained and uh, one of the best in the world and. Uh, but if you have a good insurance, we get a well-trained and treat, and you don't have a really good um, insurance, I don't know how far they can be treated, and that's also concerning. And also, the reason why is uh, our culture, all the Tibetan doctors, they training not only medicine, they have to be almost like a monk. They have to be, they have to train their mind to be love, kindness. That's how they train to them doctor nurse. If doctor nurse have a naturally, they have a pure, good heart, taking care, um, generally the compassion, and that will be the most helpful for the doctor who can treat the patients. Who doctor doesn't have a, that in the level, and that will be uh, limited to their serving to the physician. That's a difference. I think I would like to go to means to main point about the uh, using the last name. Sometimes I forgot my last name. Means when I go, went to hospital, the people call Mr. Pandora. <laughs> but if they call me by the first name, Prasad, yes. <laughs> so because of the tradition, the the tradition, right? Means the in Thailand mostly we use the first name. The, the first name is there. Uh, still right now. I my name is very different from Prasad, but the people still call me Prasad, but they may use the the title different, like a uh, like a Grandpa Prasad, Pa Prasad, is it something like that? Uh -huh. Or oh, Brother Prasad means they like the what they respect me as, like the Close age, they may call me like a brother, but then if they, 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 they in the age of their parents, they may call uh, Papa, so that they use that word, means Paul, Luang Paul, means uh, the Holy Father, or if the kids call me right now, the kid around the temple call me say, Holy Grandpa, <laughs> means uh, something. But but my but we we go with the first name. Mispressed. And then about the treatment, I think because I'm Thailand Americanized that I don't like. <laughs> I don't like, but I like, but I don't like. Me, me, me too much. Like you know, the history of Thailand never be under colony of anyone, never have the big war with anyone except Burmese. Right. So, so we're quite Americanized. Now we throw. I don't like America, uh, being Americanized session because I like we deny our, our, the goodness of our value. Many things in Thailand that good, but we just throw away, we take what America offer to us, everything. So that is that, that too much. 
and the but Thai people, I think still now 80% up. It still go with American doctors, American uh, ID, American what Americans something like that. And then we very trust, very trustful to uh, American medicine, American system. We we trust that. But now that the group of the people or hospitals, they try to have the go back to the Thai herbs, the dosing treatment uh, from Chai, Chinese, Japanese, and the Thai. But mainly, you have to go with American. So that is the treatment in, in Thailand. It's like that. So we, we really trust American about the, the treatment. But for, especially my, I myself right now, past two years, I always, I always remind people about <coughs> Uh, treatment in the what they in their village, not um, not the modern system, not American system, because I had a direct experience from my friends. Now he's 70, 75 years old. They are part of the temple in my army. He went back to Thailand, maybe a, two, a month, two months earlier than than us, because we follow him there because we had a big conference in Thailand, in Bangkok. So he went to the center that for the treatment in the Thai tradition, just herbs only, just a na natural way. They really believe like that. And then the, he was told that Ameri means the modern medicine is like a poison. I think yes, right, but wrong, right, right and wrong. So he kept up those medicine, and then he. When with the system for a month, he feel very good. The first day I, I met, we met him, he looked very really good. But 10 days after that, he went to visit his mom who like a 99 years old, something like that. And, uh, and then he got shocked with, on the way back to Bangkok after seeing his mom, his mother. So he admitted to the hospital nearby. So. I asked the doctor what happened to him because I believe that he could not survive from my eyes during the time. The doctor said that there was the what is kind of diabetes, the over the bad things, but the control by modern medicine spread all over. So, so he had to stay in that hospital for seven days and transfer to Bangkok uh, to the Chris Hospital in Bangkok and stay there more than a month. And, but now he, he, I think he recovered like an 80 percent he, he used to be. If he would continue taking American medicine the same time or don't go to, didn't go to that treatment in, mm -hmm. ever. So he would, he would be better than this. That's my idea. I always give the example for, of these monks to the people when they talk about the, uh, what is the traditional medicine. Uh, tra traditional, uh, that they have to look at themselves and then go both together, how to balance it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, people took a Most of these people are what we call caregivers. They take care of older people. Is there something special that they should know from, mm -hmm. we talk a little bit about it, but is there something you want to tell them so that you can get, if you go to the hospital and they see you, and, and, how do you want them to take care of you? Is there something that we missed? Yeah, I think as an individual, I think I am expecting you all will uh, kind mind. Kindness, kindness is the most important. Once you have the kindness, then uh, your treatment, whatever you give, is going to be very valuable. Yeah. If you're doing that only for your, as a job, as a, just only for money, that your value is small. So it's a very, very important that your kindness is a very important in love and care. That's the most uh, generous you can give to the patient. And then they will, as soon as you will see, they will be affected right away and by your kindness. They will feel. Once they feel, whatever you treat, they will trust you and they will make that uh, a lot of healing will be 
energy will be time grow and it will be really uh, definitely helpful and so that's my uh, I think these people are anxious to the patient because when we see the, at least from the people who are able to take care of us they are anxious right if I am stronger than them I am better than them I would not need, I don't need their them to take care of me. <laughs> when they come to take care of me, they are anxious. So I think all the patients, all the sick people, the old people, oh, I think they believe like that. I don't know all the people, but I, I think that they, when they look at, at us, at you like that, I think that yes. After that, I think it depends on our heart. I think everything in Buddhism, the Buddha said, Mano Bubangama Dhamma Mano Seda Mano Maya. The mind is a master, the mind is a leader. Means uh, I think your mind has to come first. Means you, I think, to like what Reverend just said about you, how to cultivate the loving kindness, how to care about them, have the good, warm heart, good heart to them, how to do the best you are able to do without any bad feeling that is in in your mind. But for sure, if you meet many people, right? different kinds of the people, some people will really tap to deal with. I think that is. I think in Buddhism, the Buddha always reminds us that what we do to alter, we will get it back. So if we just try the best to us, uh, to them, I think we would get the good, good things back. We talk about the reverend just said, the, I think the loving kindness, the compassion, so I think it's very, very important to cut your weight. But if you cannot, uh, if you cannot help them, you have to be above that. Don't put those people, those actions, those people on your, in your mind. I would say that the word meant on your head. Don't carry them with you, but just accept what they are. Be above them. Be above. Because they are old, or that the nature they born with, or they sick because of the medication, we have to understand all the conditions around them. And then when we understood about that, and then we have to be above everything, do all the best job with a good heart, with a compassion, pray for them. I think that is my idea. Okay, thank you very much. Now um, we still have a little bit of time, but. Uh, Please, if you have any questions, please uh, 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 direct them to here. This is a, a rare opportunity. Yes, Don. Uh, I am. I'm a chaplain. Yes, sir. A person dies on our retirement community. How should? What are there some? Are there some traditions, um, cultural things that would be helpful? a uh, particular dress for the person, you know, help me. A, uh, a Buddhist from, from um, Thailand Tibet, dies, Tibet first. or Just whatever. No, Tibet first. What, <laughs> Tibet do do? First. what do I do? How can I help the family? How can I, what, what can I do? Um, yeah, uh, like a, I remember that uh, in Auckland Highland Hospital, I have one chaplain reverend. I met him. Uh, Reverend told me, "Oh, I'm glad I met you, one um, Buddhist guy here, you know, uh, because uh, I have so many Buddha men dying coming here, and I don't know what to do. So next time I call you." <laughs> <laughs> one time, chaplain called me like two o'clock nine. Hey, one Buddha man dying. <laughs> Can you come? There? <laughs> so generally, it's very simple. I think you have expert. You have a your your culture where to do the uh, uh, do the healing the uh, the ceremony what do you do and uh, as a respect you can communicate with the person who in that uh, the person uh, who caring and uh, their relatives and uh, they and uh, I think basically your your uh, prayer will be perfect your prayer will be 
traffic will be uh, helpful at uh, that moment. At that moment, that will be definitely helpful. And then they will take care of their tradition in their home and uh, whatever they will take care of that. Your prayer, your loving kindness, that's the really most valuable. Mm -hmm. And then you don't need to be uh, who people are dying, whoever give you the blessing with <coughs> pure heart. It's, you don't need to be Buddhist, you don't need to be Christian, you know. Whoever, I'm, I'm a Buddhist, if I, I see some Christian, you know, whoever person says, I never ask who, where, who you belong to, I just, even dog dying, I pray. The animal die, we pray for that. So that's just, our prayer is for universal to pray for. So that would be your, be very universal. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with him about that. I think it is uh, when uh, you work with the peace of the dying person, I think the car the words. And then I think the psychology would take a very important part during that time. Means about understand about the nature of the person, the belief of the person. Talk about that. And then like you uh, with the Buddhist who's dying, you already we know about the belief of the Buddhist people, maybe of the Buddha. Even I myself, I just ask them to oh, recite the word Buddha, Buddha, lead them to meditate, and then don't ask them to let everything go, but just be calm, be happy, and then see like a, okay, uh, normally I would ask the people to look, to imagine about the Buddha image or anything that is they love most in front of them, like they're sitting in there, and then call that name, Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. I, 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 use, I use that, that technique. So I think that it's very important to understand about the uh, nature of the uh, individual. And then, uh, and then like I uh, just said, I think anything, <coughs> you, you may pray anything beautiful with a beautiful voice, do it. They will listen to that. And then, if you want to point, if the last minute, you know that the last minute of them, you just point towards the better place. I would do that. Think about a good, a good future there. Because in Buddhism, we believe in asana kamma, means the, what the action of the mind before we pass from this life to next life. If our oh, mind attach, to any, any, our oh, mind will be reborn or we go to that place first. If we think about the good thing, we go to the good place. If we think about the bad thing, like I thought, think about my bad karma in the past, my, my life, next life might go to, to bad first. Even I did everything good from, from the past, but I, something caught up in my mind, the bad thing, I, I may be born in that. Before, and then until that end, and then something like that. But we want them to go to the right place. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, no. But the calmness is very important. Ask them to be calm, to be happy. So that is. If the true Buddhists are, oh, let everything go. Relax. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, you know, we have lots of rituals, but in the event you can't get a Buddhist priest there in time, you know, I think that's a very good advice. Any other questions? Yes, Marita. Um, end of life decisions. Mm. You know, in this country, we have um, we encourage people to do advanced planning about how much uh, how uh, whether they want to. Um, have a lot of interventions, be put on a respirator, or have, uh, if their heart stops, do what we call CPR, uh, cardio lung resuscitation. Uh, so we, we approach people as individuals, and, and sometimes I know that there is more uh, a sense of the family taking care of these kinds of um,
questions and, and getting the information on, on how close to death someone might be or if they're very terminal. So I'm wondering in your experience with your community, do most of your elders want to um, know that their state of, uh, you know, how close they are to death and make their own decisions? Do they want their families to? How, how should a nurse or a doctor approach a Tibetan elder? Yeah, yeah that uh, definitely Tibetans, we uh, believe uh, the people die, dying. I mean, it's accident dies different than natural yeah. dying. Natural dying is absorbing all the five elements elements absorbing one after one so sometimes you look like you died but still you still have your your pension is still alive your your life is still alive so we 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 try to keep it as much as until to completely uh, absorb the elements elements of the, the people so more natural more dying. naturally uh -huh. yes major. that uh -huh. is the most important uh -huh. can we not ask uh, uh, okay, his body is not moving, this element done, but still there is some sense of the life is still remain. We, we want to keep that until that, that complete uh, stage uh, is absorbed. Mm -hmm. That's uh, our culture, yeah. But in America, I mean, depend to the, uh, depend to the individual space of the, how the uh, elements absorbing. Mm -hmm. Some some accident or those problems that I mean that just go like that, but uh, generally we like to naturally be mm -hmm. complete. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So in uh, Thai belief, I think we should die the body uh, in natural way without equipment, right? Mm -hmm. So because the we believe that. If we would die, I think it is depends on our karma. Depends on our karma. It's the uh -huh. time to go, something like that. But because right now there is many equipment to support that, I think so. We have to look at the needs of individual. Yes. So we have to follow that. Mm -hmm. but for but Thai people, quite easy to un to explain about the natural death. Just take it out and then you just... But in, in America, when you go to the hospital, you have to sign a paper. Mm -hmm. Not necessary, but they want you to say, mm -hmm. you know, what do you want, or how do you want us to treat you if you're dying? Do you want us to do everything to keep you alive? Or do you want to just have pain uh, to, so you can just die comfortably? Mm -hmm. So there's a big uh, question. Right. Yeah. So do you have any but, thoughts on that? Yeah. The, first of all, uh, when the patient go to see, see uh, I met some uh, Tibetan, some people who been to the hospital sick, yeah. and they was most uncomfortable signing. They mm -hmm. says before the treatment, they says you might get this uh, side effect, this one side effect, this one <laughs> sign, sign, sign. They get yes, so, right. <laughs> then later they get so right. nervous. Yeah. <laughs> they said, I'm coming there, I have a problem, I'm coming to see a doctor. They wanted me to sign for, you, know, you might get side effect in this, this, and they make you more like <laughs> right. out of control. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, our culturally, yes, uh, culturally, the uh, they like to stay as um, doctor can use as much as whatever possibility until he can be alive. That is not like limited, not limited. That is the uh, that is the Tibetan. Yes, but I think the Thai uh, Thai people quite easy <laughs> about about do, doing decision because they listen to the doctors to the nurse. They believe in that system. <coughs> they believe in that. Because they did in Thai, like a Thai people, after 75, after in the certain of age, they say, oh, it's okay. Experience enough. And then they, they, they cannot contribute any, any, any more after 75 or 80, something like that. They yeah. just accept what 
is what happened. Mm-hmm. Depends on the doctor. If the doctor would say, "Oh, we have a chance to take care of them," let the doctor do that. If no chance, we listen to them. Okay. So uh, we're coming to the end of our hour. So do you, any last? You want to say anything more to them or? Uh, no, I think that only for the, you all are expert than us, and you are the whole the healer. So <laughs> we cannot ask you that much. Most important is the, our uh, Western uh, and the Easterns. I think they're both the combination uh, have a very valuable. So like the Eastern traditional, like uh, kindness and spirituality, and that is the, your motivation to build into your expert experience, your professional, will be the most uh, gifted. And uh, so, and, and I can say a little prayer, or you want me to wait? Oh, let, let's wait. have Ajahn say something first. So I would say the same, what he did. <laughs> but I thank you very much for giving, giving me a chance to have met you. And then I think, I hope you may get something what we have offered to you, maybe some more or big. So I hope and if you help yourself, especially I think the people who work like you, you doing right now, I think that you do with your heart. One thing, please do not punish yourself. Be above the patience, above your actions. Mean you have it with a good heart. Do it with a good heart. And the, but have to let everything, everything go. Do not put on your back, on your shoulder, about their problems. I think I, for myself, I believe that all of you, all of us, want the people to be happy, healthy, live long life, and be what they want to, to be, right? Mm-hmm. So, but we cannot help. So I think that you have to let everything go, how to learn, learn how to let those things go from, from your own life. Do, don't take the actions of other people or the matters of other people to your matter, to be, a, be your problem, and then enjoy your work. Thank you. So uh, we'll have a um, couple close the prayer. Okay. Maybe Ajahn, you can follow. Sure. Okay, sh- okay. short prayer. Yeah. I'll do my short prayers. OK, let's pray together and act together. May all the mother sentient beings live happily, always free from animosity. May all share in the blessings springing from the good we done. May our mind be filled with thought of loving kindness, compassion, appreciate joy, equanimity. May we be generous, may we be gentle, may we be relaxed, May we be peaceful, may we be healthy, may our heart become soft and respect to each other. As long as space remains, for long as sentient beings remain, until then may we too remain to dispel the miseries of the world. Thank you. I just would like to end. <coughs> end up with the meditation. Mm. Would you please just sit comfortably? Close your eyes as you're sleeping in bed. (coughs) Take the deep breath. You may, you may hold your breath as long as possible. And then, please make your mind feel fresh. Make your mind feel happy. Concentrate on your breathing in and out. Please do it with happy mind. (coughs) 
or you may concentrate on the blessings in the Pali language. A pure tanasilit sanit jang buddha vaja yin uchata ruadhamma vatanti ayuvanna usukhang phala Please take a deep breath. Thank you very much. Okay, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.